Welcome to Things You Should Know, The Great War Extra Edition. Today we're going to take a sidetrack and talk about a colorful and intriguing person you may not have heard of before. He is famous for his actions in the Great War and was known for his fighting prowess and enthusiasm for collecting German military equipment. This reputation earned him the nickname, The Souvenir King. Originally, John was born in Liverpool, England in 1873 to Jacob and Dora Heim. John always wanted to join the military, and at age 14, he attempted to join the British Army, but the Army returned him when John's mother protested. At the age of 16, he enlisted in the Royal Navy, but was discharged by the age of 18 because he had contracted malaria. For unknown reasons, he left his family and emigrated to Australia in 1904. After arriving in Australia, he successfully joined the Australian Imperial Force and was promptly discharged as medically unfit in 1915. He was able to join a second time on May 8, 1916, at the ripe old age of 44 and was assigned to the 45th Battalion. After completing his training in England, he was sent to the Western Front in 1917. In June 1917, he captured 60 German soldiers during the Battle of Messines by himself and is supposed to have the largest number of individual kills in the entire Australian Imperial Force during World War I. It is said he was most effective in combat when attacking German positions where he would utilize his new favorite weapon, the brand new Mills bombs, a new type of hand grenade. It was also in these assaults of German positions that he would collect the loot that he became known for. Not all worked out well for Mr. Hines. While the commander of the 45th Battalion was impressed with his combat ability, the commander, Arthur Samuel Allen, even described to a journalist in 1930 that John was a tower of strength to the battalion. While he was on the front line, Mr. Hines had a lot of other problems. He had an alcohol problem, and with the many promotions he got, he was court-martialed at least nine times for drunkenness, impeding military police, forging entries on his paybook, being absent without leave. He stole a horse and traded it for a bottle of whiskey. Unfortunately, he was injured during a gas attack and did not heal in time to return to the end of the war by 1918. And when World War II started, he attempted to join the army again. But in his mid to late 60s, the military would not take him. When he passed in 1958, he was buried in an unmarked grave that in 1971, the Returned Services League of Australia honored him by erecting him a headstone, and he received a monument at the Mount Druitt Waterholes Remembrance Garden in 2002. That, my friends, is the story of the Souvenir King. Join us next time on Things You Should Know, The Great War.